Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Frankenstein According to Spike Milligan by, you guessed it, Spike Milligan. As always, I am going to read the blurb, but then I'm going to go through and check out my tabs and I'm going to share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. What I will say is uh, Spike Milligan has quite like a distinct sense of humour. And this is basically him just taking the bare bones of the Frankenstein story and just doing whatever he likes with it. You're probably going to enjoy it more if you're both a Spike Milligan fan and a Frankenstein fan. Although if you're one or the other, you'll probably enjoy it. Otherwise, you're probably not going to like it. So we're going to go in with a blurb. How can I describe my emotions at this catastrophe or delineate the wretch whom with such infinite pains and care I had endeavoured to form? There was the bolt that affixed his neck to his spine. There were the screws holding his forehead to his skull. But now was the moment of truth. I plunged the electrodes into his rectum and switched on the current. He gave a groan and he was alive. He spoke as he sat up. Have you got a fag, mate? My God, I had given birth to a nicotine junkie. I handed him the cigarette which I lit, then leaping off the table he stood there. But alas, we had forgotten one thing. He had no support for his trousers which fell to the floor revealing his manhood in all its glory. If any women saw them they would be leaving their husbands in thousands. Quickly I got some string round his trousers. What had I done? No mortal could support the horror of that countenance. I rushed downstairs to seek refuge in a cupboard where I remained during the rest of the night, walking up and down in great agitation. Something difficult to do in a cupboard. And so that gives you quite a good feel, I think, for, uh, for his writing style and whether you're going to like it. It's also quite cool. He has an introduction, author's introduction to the standard novels edition. Um, in which he kind of rewrites uh, Mary Shelley's introduction. So, the publishers of the standard novels, in selecting Frankenstein for one of their series, expressed a wish that I should furnish them with an account of the origin. Well, my own account stands at £3.10. How I, then a young girl, came to think of and dilate upon so very hideous an idea? The answer is I was kinky and pretty bent and was smoking the stuff. It is true that I am very averse to bringing myself forward in print. I would rather bring myself sideways. In writing this book, I can scarcely accuse myself of a personal intrusion. I always get someone else to do it. And then uh, this bit about Percy Shelley here. At first I thought but a few pages of a short tale, about five feet three inches, but Shelley urged me to develop this idea to a greater length, a hundred feet six inches. I certainly, did not owe the, I certainly did not owe the suggestion of any one incident to my husband. In fact, he did bugger all. However, but for his incitement, it would never have taken form, and all he wanted was 60% of the royalties. And then we have the preface by P.B. Shelley, 1818. This preface has absolutely nothing to do with Mary's book. It is written so I'll have a few fingers in the pie when the book starts to sell. So we get this line which made me chuckle. Meanwhile, this monster was walking the countryside at 100 miles per hour, demanding cigarettes and strangling people if they did not give him one. And uh, you can see like the volume 2 divider here. Uh, there's a lot of blank space in this book and it was only about 130 pages. So I mean, I was through it in like half a day or something. I like this bit here. Uh, my eyes became accustomed to the light and to perceive objects in their right forms. I could distinguish herbs from animals. I could tell the difference between a nettle and an elephant. One gave you a sting, the other killed you. Another delightful paragraph here. I learned the names of the cottagers themselves. The girl was called Agatha, the youth Felix, and the man, Father. I cannot describe the delight I felt when I learned the ideas appropriated to each of these sounds, so I won't. I distinguished several other words without yet being a I distinguished several other words without being able to yet understand, though I repeated them, such as fire, milk, bread, wood, shit. We get this horrendously racist bit where the joke is basically they ask a black guy are you an n-bomb and then he replies no i'm a and then it's a w-bomb it's an equally bad racist word jesus we arrived at rotterdam it was a clear morning at length we arrived in england where we saw the numerous steeples of london st paul's the tower angus steakhouse deep Pan pizza boots the london dungeons garfunkels uh, this bit made me chuckle as well Clerval's design was to visit India in the belief that he had in his knowledge of its various languages starvation, plague and leprosy. And he believed in trade, importing chicken vindaloo and exporting fish and chips. I tried to conceal myself as much as possible and I wore a clown's mask. I often refused to accompany him, alleging, alleging other engagement like mud wrestling. I'd finally found a good pair of boobs to start on my female monster. Sometimes here and there we get little notes from the editor as well, like little fictitious notes from the editor. So uh, here we have, it was a monotonous yet ever-changing scene. Its hills are covered with veins, as were the legs of the islanders. Starting my experiments, my mind fixed on the consummation of my labour and my eyes shut to the horror of my proceedings. Thus I kept walking into the walls. I looked towards the completion of my work with tremendous hope, which I dared not trust myself to question, but which was intermixed with obscure forebodings of evil that made my heart sicken in my bosom. And then in brackets, what a load of bollocks, editor.
another just I think this is what I enjoy about Spike Milligan his one liners you know so we have here um, chapter, chapter 4 I think of the last section I was soon introduced into the presence of the magistrate he looked upon me however with some degree of severity at college he had taken a degree in severity and then at the end Frankenstein attaches two grenades to the monster's balls and explode them blowing them to smithereens the cabin was speckled with bits of monster balls so yeah, overall, I mean, I did enjoy it. It's obviously quite dated, and I think you have to look past a lot of things with it. Um, and um, I don't know, personally, I would rather just... I enjoyed Frankenstein more than this. <laughs> um, but I am still glad I read it. I gave it like a 3.75 out of 5, and I guess I would recommend it to you if you're a Frankenstein or a Spike Milligan fan, or if you've enjoyed any of the little bits that I've just read out. So there we have it. So there we have it. That's what I thought of Frankenstein according to Spike Milligan. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.